Isn't this great? I could die at any time. <laughs> that moment you're not expecting it. It's going to go. The Reaper shall appear in a corner. Point to you. <laughs> I think it's fab. Um, God, all my life I never thought I'd live long. Actually, I never thought I'd make it past 30. I have now seen the best side of 30. <laughs> and now Cambridge Police want me in jail so I can be killed. They've never denied that. You've never denied that, Cambridge Police. I've pointedly, repeatedly put the question to you, asked the question, do you want me in jail and killed? And you've just never answered. Which makes it true. <laughs> I sold my soul a long time ago to the devil. Um, there's not much more I can be said about that. Uh, some time ago, this is advancement. This is layers going over layers, you know, so I can't really put a time on it. Some time ago, I prepared my soul for death. Which I think is, it is you know, I think that's a very healthy option. Because let's face it, one, we're all going to die of something, sometime, at some point, somewhere. Well, of course, somewhere. Everybody has to be somewhere. <laughs> um, and two, well, I don't think you should be afraid of it. I think people are more afraid of the way they're going to die rather than the actual act of death. Can there be an act of death? Act of dying. Circumstance of death. Yes! Yes, they we're there, we're there. <laughs> people are more afraid of the way they're going to die rather than the circumstance of death. You know what I mean? Right, so, um, the Cambridge Police won't be in jail and dead. That's undisputable, irrevocable, unrefutable. Um, I think that's fine, because if, if they want to cover up all these crimes that their council mates have committed and they're, they're, they watch their bailiff mates go around breaking the law every day and then three coppers turn up at my door on an unlogged call out no no those those officers never left the station and they say that if you want to know who's in charge find out who you cannot criticize and that appears to be marston billis because <laughs> they just call the cop shop and go right he's not home send three officers round and i fucking saw you on the way back on the back road from fucking St. Ives back to Huntington when I was coming home from work. You three lying bastard coppers. I don't even fucking care who you are. I don't know who you were. Right? The fact is, that was an unlogged call out, an unlogged visit. And I fucking saw you. You're a fucking bunch of Nazi fuckwit, carrot fucking worshipping fucking android fucking zombie. Fuckwits. And I'm dead already, so I don't care. I can say what I fucking want to say. You've made that point quite clear. I go to Crown Court for a hearing I don't even have to fucking be at, and you put me in a fucking dock, and then the fucking Crown Court judge has a fucking go at me for broadcasting a case on fucking social media. Oh, fuck me. Sorry, Your Honour. 
But you know what? There's a media blackout on this because John Major orchestrated 25 years worth of theft in the public purse to give his council mates fucking five grand a year bonuses for fuck knows how many years and fuck knows how many council employees were involved. But we are possibly talking fucking millions of taxpayers' cash going in fucking council employees' back fucking pockets. I'm going to arrest you under the domestic violence law. I'm going to arrest you under the domestic violence law. My name's Chris Green. I'm a bear from Master Bears. I'm going to arrest you under the domestic violence law. Millions of your fucking taxpayers' cash has gone in fucking council employees' back pockets to give them free fucking holidays to Thailand, free cars, free fucking houses, probably. My name's Chris Green, I work for Maths and Bears. I'm going to arrest you under the domestic violence law for non payment of council tax. It's a bit of a random video. <laughs> I'm sober, I swear. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna get that crack pipe, man. I'm gonna spark that fucker up, man. <laughs> I don't do drugs. I do, I do alcohol and cigarettes. I don't do crack, man. I don't do. I don't do that crack shit, man. I don't do coke. I don't do pills. Don't do skeks to see. <laughs> I never I never have actually. Oh god, I smoked a few joints in college probably. Fucking twenty five years ago. <laughs> never liked it, I always prefer to beer. Um I'm not quite sure why. Anyway. The point being, there is no point. This is a totally random video. I might be dead tomorrow. I might be, you know. You never know. I might be. I may be corpsed. Lying dead. As a corpse. Cor is corpse a word? I don't know. I'm a decidedly sleepy old chap, unable to wake. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. And so I face the final curtain. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. I did it my way. Oh well. You know what terrifies people about death is leaving their worldly possessions behind the car, the house, the money. Family. Maybe I should have put that first. <laughs> <laughs> Um, leaving their worldly possessions behind, leaving their relatives behind also. I mean, that that's a big thing, you know. It's like, oh God, what's my daughter going to do if I die? What's my son going to do if I die? What's my aunt going to do if I die? You know, they'll be distraught. They'll be... Death is hardest on those that are left behind. Because we're still alive. And they're gone. Oh God! They're gone! They're gone! They're gone! Months, years spent in anguish, just in, oh, grieving, grieving over oh, the dear departed. Which is sad, I think, in a way. I mean, we should grieve, but you know, people, people's lives have been destroyed, obviously, by those closest to them dying. Um, and that's wrong, I think. 
you know, it's a mentality issue. I suppose different people get affected in different ways. Um, but that's, you really shouldn't, you know, that person's gone and no matter what they meant to you and, and how much they've done for you, they're not coming back. <laughs> Fuck all you can do about that, is there? You know, <laughs> that's popping the mortal coil. Um, and my gran in particular, who, God, 18 odd years, maybe more since she's died, I think, um, she, I don't know why, but she she affected me a lot when she died, and her death affected me a lot. Um, I'm not quite sure why, of all the family members I've ever had. Um, but she was she was brilliant. She just lived to 96, you know. Um, and she knew. Some six, seven, eight years before, she knew she was on sort of her last legs, as it were. And of course, what what do people do? We're all like, no, no, you're going to live forever, don't you? <laughs> you do, don't you? It's like your girlfriend cooks you a really shit meal, and you go, "That's lovely, darling." <laughs> What? What? You were going to throw up? No, no. I just uh, took a, took an extra breath. You do, don't you? <laughs> People are just fucking. <laughs> no, it's lovely, darling. No, no, nothing wrong with that at all. Excuse me, man. I have to go outside. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, God, what was my point? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Uh, and now, the end is near. <laughs> well, I'm never going to be the next Frank Sinatra. That's for fucking sure. Um, Do you know what? I'd, I'd love to do something really dramatic like say, come on then, Cambridge Police, bring it on. <laughs> but, you know, I'm insane and, um, well, there's a lot of other issues going on, let's face it. And I really don't fucking care anymore. So, just, just, just come on then, Cambridge Police, just bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've only got one option left, guys, and that's a full frontal fucking assault because I'm not going to answer my phone and I'm gonna, not going to answer the fucking door to you because you're a bunch of fucking lying, fucking frog faced fucking fuckwit um, who just make up a law to protect your council mates and your bent bailiff mates as you fucking go along. And you don't fucking verbally arrest people or charge them, and then you fucking drag them into court. And if they don't turn up in court, then you send your thug fucking officers around like PC Whelan. Who, by the way, is threatening to sue me for slander because I'm saying he's a fucking thug. <laughs> Listen, we'll get this done one way or the other. One way or the other only says one thing to me, PC Whelan. And it's not good. And way, way, way back in the day, even before I joined the army, I used to hang out with some very nasty bastards. And they used to say things like that a lot to other people. And the meaning was quite fucking clear. I was nothing but polite to that man. We'll get this done one way or the other. Yes, well, that's outstanding, isn't it? Very autrefois. <laughs> Very je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais pas. Who da who aha? No, you're not a thug at all, are you, mate? 
just bounced away into my fucking hallway. Completely fucking uninvited. I'm a policeman. I can do anything I want. No, you fucking can't. Right, you have to obey the law more than anyone else ever put together. Except these days, you just seem to make it up as you fucking go along. For fuck's sake. Oh, God, I'm tired. I'm drunk. No, I'm not drunk. I'm drunk. I'm still tired. It's been a shit day. <laughs> I'll see you all there.